Okay, so before I start this tutorial today, I'd uh, just like to ask all my subscribers or anyone watching this video, just be sure to hit notifications. I've just looked at my statistics and it's shockingly bad and I'm doing content which people are asking for out there such as standalone emulation content and I'm also doing front end content related videos. So just be sure to hit those notifications so you don't miss out. So anyway, let's go on with this tutorial. I'm looking at doing another video on Atari ST emulation. Uh, my last video I did probably about a month ago when I was using Atari. I've had people comment and they've all recommended Steam. So I've looked at Steam and yeah, it's a very good emulator, hence this tutorial. So that's not to say Hattori is a bad emulator whatsoever, but I'm just showing you that there's actually an alternative which some of you might find easier to use. So I'm going to show you the website and the links in my description for this. And the first result you're going to see if you Google this, or like I say, links in my description, is a sourceforge.net website. So this is Steam SSE, and if you just download this, and by the seems bit, Steam SSE is in active development, so there's a lot of work going on it to date. And as we can see, um, it's been brought to us by a Mr. Steven Seagal. Right, so once we download this, it's going to download into a zipped file, which is okay. We just open this up and inside that zip file, you're going to get a folder. So just drag the folder out onto your desktop. And we can close down this website now. We no longer need that and also close down this window. So before I go any further with this, just give you a couple of prerequisites you need. You're going to need a toss image and as you can see I've got one on my desktop just here and the one I recommend you use is the 162 that's 1.62 uh, that's the most compatible uh, TOS file you will find to emulate most games or by the scenes of it through my research so let's just open up the Steam folder which I've just extracted and you've got several different folders and their subfolders rather and you've got the actual application itself to start opening up Steam and doing things. But before we go any further, you're going to see there is a TOS image in here, but compatibility with this isn't so great, so I'm led to believe. So once we're in this folder, I just want you to create a new folder, so right click inside here and new and folder. I'm going to just call this new folder ST Games. And on my desktop, I have got Speedball 2 Brutal Deluxe, which I've not played, but I remember the hype around Speedball 2 back in the day. It was a big game. So I'm going to just drag that in. And bear in mind, most of these games are going to only accept the .stx format of file extensions. Uh, Zip Games doesn't appear to be working with this emulator, but that's not a problem. And also inside of this folder, we're going to want to drag in our TOS image just now open the Steam XE which is going to start the process of where Steam needs to find things to make things easier so first of all it's going to ask if you want to put a shortcut in your start menu I'm going to press yes but that's optional and next it's going to ask us where it can find the operating system that's the TOS image so okay and we're going to locate this and of course I dropped this into my Steam folder a minute ago so I'm going to just left click on that image 162 us and i'm going to press open so the next thing it's going to do is tell us the file extensions for games that steam supports so we've got st dot stx and dim and it's also telling us about msa on a pc drive for its floppy disks but i think that's a bit too advanced to be honest for such a basic tutorial so i'm going to press ok on this and just a minute ago, I made a ST games folder. So that's going to locate our games to make things easier. And I'm press, going to press OK. And it's next going to tell us about hard drive setups. That's virtual hard drive setups uh, that Steam can support up to 10 hard drives. But for this tutorial, I'm also going to put no. And next up, it's going to say Steam is ready to go. Select a disk in the disk manager. Click on the yellow play button or press F12 to start emulation. It also tells us about releasing the mouse. So say you're playing a cursor game, we're going to need to press F11 to release it. So OK on this. So let's 
start by loading a game so what I'm going to do I'm going to go to disk manager which is located here left click on this and from here it goes straight into our directory which I just set it up to do and this is our Atari ST games library so I'm going to try speedball 2 and I'm going to double left click it and that's it it takes us straight into speedball 2 and it does take a little while to load this one up As you can see, there's uh, some green text at the top, and that's just looking through the disk contents. Remember, these st and .stx files are literally copies of a disk image, so this Steam emulator is treated like it's the real thing. So to play this, I've actually plugged in my PlayStation 3 controller, and I've actually not set it up. It didn't need setting up, it runs straight out of the box. So yes, like I was saying, I know that Speedball 2 was a big hypes game back in the early 90s, but I never played it until tonight, and I know it was available on most micros back in the day. And for you Atari people out there, I apologise for wearing my Commodore t-shirt. I know there's still a war on, covertly. Not like it used to be, but I know there is a war between Amiga and Atari ST, but that's, that's it. So, uh, like I was saying, I'm controlling this without actually setting up my PlayStation 3 controller. I've literally just got this plugged in through USB to my laptop. So, it all works fine. So, yes, this is a new experience to me. Uh, press fire. I honestly got no idea how to play this game but we can see it's running okay so it looks like the game starts okay okay that's all good and well but what about having a full screen what else can we do with steam let me show you so we need to press f12 to exit out of the game now if we go to the top using our cursor on say your computer or laptop, whatever you're using, you're going to see a little settings, a little cog symbol here. If you left click on that, it's going to come up a full array of options. So ones to look for is the full screen mode to make this into full screen. So we can either just go direct into full screen and there we go. bit like a FIFA game. <laughs> I'm a bit clueless what to do where it's just people running all over the place. Anyway, so to exit out the full screen, I'm going to just press F12 once again and that's it. Okay, so other things you can do with Steam is we can add scan lines. So if you want a real retro experience, and I know a lot of you do, we just left click on scan lines. So it's going to give us these scan lines, but let's check this out in the full screen mode. So if I go to full screen mode again, there we go so for me that's a little bit too much i think that's pretty intense stuff so press f12 again to back out of here and another thing you might need to consider doing is just check in full screen or maximize window so if we just back out of here and i'll press the maximize button that will take us into directly the full screen rather than a window mode or a large window mode so press f12 once again to exit Now let's say for example you want to change the Atari ST machine you're going to be running games from. If we go to the machine under the settings, you've got a range of different models of the Atari ST. So the STF, the ST, the STE and the Mega STE. We can even change the RAM, the memory size. So right now I'm running a 1 Meg STE which is sort of basic but okay. And we can even change the clock speeds to make things run faster if we really want to. And of course the Atari ST was very famous for music production. So if you've got a MIDI keyboard hanging around and you fancy being creative, if we just go to the MIDI option here and connect to, you've got a host of different options there. So you can play around to play some music, bit of Cubase, 
Okay, let me just give you a quick tip. If you manage to mess up any of your settings when you're putting this together at the start of this video, it's just a simple case of going into the Steam folder and there's a .ini file. This is steam.ini and it says uh, the type is configuration settings. If you right click on this and just delete it, that will delete all your settings and if you go back to steam.exe, it will take you back into the process of setting up your directories. So I thought I'd just add that in there if anyone gets in a pickle. So I think that's about it for Steam. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of options to play around with it. And of course, if it auto configures my PS3 controller, it's going to also likely do that with yours as well. And if it doesn't, just buy yourself a PS3 six axis controller and I guarantee it will work. So. Yeah, like I said at the start of the video, if you've not hit notifications, please be sure to do that. Like I say, I've got a ton of new content coming up almost daily. And also remember to like, subscribe, and with my permission, you can share and distribute this video to countless Atari ST or Atari social media groups. So, until next time, take care.